So, um, my name is Caleb. I'm from the missionary committee at Cleveland Baptist, and you guys are some of our missionaries. So, we thought it'd be a good idea to, uh, yeah, help the church get to know where you guys are at in your current season of life. Um, and you've recently settled in Australia. Do you guys want to tell us a little bit about that and yourselves as well? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's been good coming back to Australia. This is supposed to, uh, the first six months of our time here was meant to be like a, a six month furlough. Mm. And as sad as it is that COVID has happened and everybody's in lockdown, we've actually been very thankful for it because it's meant we can just set up house at a slow pace. We had to move house after three months. And so, and also we've had our kids come and go a little bit. One has left to move into a share home, another mm. moved into, one has bought a house, one has, wow. I know, well, he's, getting married later in the year oh, and then okay, yeah. my daughter had to come back from uni so we needed to have her at home and then our younger son he's still at high school but just to have all of that movement happening and settling and living back in a home country mm-hmm. which we're still getting used to again and helping a, out with your mum and dad too and helping out with my mum and dad yeah. so mum and dad are both not well and uh, mum has dementia and dad he's just got his own physical ailments but just yeah, I've been seeing them nearly every week every second week so there's a lot of busyness but the COVID has helped us to just take a breather and do it a bit slowly without having to um, have the added responsibility of visiting lots of people. And as much as we love doing that, it sort of gives us a chance to just settle quickly. Yeah, a good opportunity to, to rest. And yeah, 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 yeah. Take that mm-hmm. furlough in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so um, let's, so after that, our six months, then we'll be looking more getting back into how we're going to be involved with our ministry in Vanuatu. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, based in Australia still, that's sort of coming and going, but that's all complicated by situation with COVID. You know, we had originally planned to be back in Vanuatu mm-hmm. actually this month on our first visit, but that's not possible and not likely to be possible until um, later in the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Have there been any effects of coronavirus in Vanuatu or are they pretty much clear? Yeah. Uh, there's been no official cases of COVID in Vanuatu. Oh, okay. And yeah, I suspect that's true because if COVID did get into Vanuatu, their mm-hmm. health system's not up to, you know, looking after it and be sort of really bad for the yeah. country. Yeah. So it appears that they've dodged a bullet in that regard, yeah. but they're very reluctant to have outsiders come into the country, people from other places. So, mm. you know, that's obviously restricting our plans. So, you know, we don't know when the Australian airlines will start traveling again, and we don't know when Vanuatu will open the borders to receive travelers and that sort of thing. So mm. we're sort of on hold at the moment. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. And I heard recently there was quite a significant cyclone that went through Vanuatu. Mm. Were there any effects of that where you were working? Yeah, it was um, quite came quite close to the village where we lived and worked in Vanuatu, and um, one of the largest cyclones that they've ever had, mm. and so they had a huge impact. Um, many of the houses uh, in our area were either lost their roofs or blown down completely. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, their houses are made out of thatch and bamboo, and they're traditional style yeah. houses, so they're not very strong. But um, yeah, a lot of a lot of our friends that we know of houses that they've had to rebuild, but that's been difficult too because um, uh, the the local resources like um, palm leaves and things which they use to build their their roofs and stuff that's been blown away as well. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. it's very difficult for them to get the materials they need to um, uh, rebuild. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. uh, but um, you know, we were able to raise some money through various contacts of ours and send it over to get building materials and tents and tarpaulins and that sort of thing. So they've really appreciated it. They're very thankful for the, the support they've had from their Christian friends here in Australia and it, you know, people from Cleveland Baptist as well and other churches mm-hmm. that support us have really come to the fore in that regard. So yeah, that's mm-hmm. helped them out a lot in terms of having building materials, temporary housing and also emergency food because yeah. the, the cyclones have also completely damaged their food gardens and things. Ah, so yeah. so they're, they're basically surviving on rice and tin fish at the moment while they're trying to get their gardens and things back in order. So yeah, it's a difficult time for them. And, um, and you know, that sort of, sort of put things on hold for us too. You know, we're happy to get our guys that we work with there sort of getting on with the translation work, but you know, they're completely focused on um, just getting their house in order, which really- yeah. And communications. Yeah. Oh yes, and um, yeah, it's just it's difficult to you know mm-hmm. keep in touch with them where they live. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know we can send texts from time to time, but I can't just ring them up and say how are you going and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. So I got to wait for them to you know our friends to come to town and sort of to communicate with us that way. So it's fairly infrequent. Mm-hmm. So it's been quite challenging to do yeah. help help them out. We'd love to be there to 
you know, be on hand to sort of be more directly help them. Mm-hmm. But that's obviously not possible at the moment. But you know, we've been yeah pleased that we can uh, help out in sort of the remote way and um, help, yeah, supply their needs that way. So we're really thankful to the, the people who have come on board to you know, give to help them out too. And, mm. yeah. Actually, yeah, we've been really thankful. Partly that we've got that aspect from here, we can help support them. But to know we've also got friends, other missionaries on the ground in Vanuatu still that didn't leave mm-hmm. and so we can actually call on them and say hey you know give these guys a hand so it's been really lovely to be able to yeah. be that little you know road for them mm-hmm. to be able to have some support from yeah. outside, of, outside of the country yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. it'll probably be you know, a couple of months before the, the guys I work with and the translation work are really ready to to go ahead with any more work they've still got you know other things to, to focus on at the moment yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, it's really good that there's Christians on the ground there at a time like this. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's a real testimony to our community too that you know people from far away mm. uh, are you know willing to help them, mm. and that they're people of you know God who you know care about them in that way, even though yeah. they've never seen them. That's sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's uh, it's really exciting to see that. Mm. Yeah, it's really great. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess now moving on from living in Vanuatu full time, what's next for you guys? Yeah. Um, the like I was saying, the, the translation work isn't finished yet. Yeah. Um, we were, uh, I think last time we spoke with the church, we said there was about eighty percent of the New Testament translated into the Mary language yeah. of the, the people, the language that people speak there. Um, so we're hoping over the next couple of years that we can finish that last twenty percent and have the New Testament ready to publish and distribute amongst the community wow. um yeah so the plan was for us to for, for me particularly to come and go every couple of months yeah to spend a bit of time with our local guys working with them you know preparing materials for them to translate and so on and check on the work that they've done mm. then come back home prepare some more then a couple of months later so that's sort of ongoing coming and going mm. that was the plan um but until we know that we can get back which may not be till the end of the year yeah. it's, it's really uncertain at the moment mm. so we've got to explore maybe ways and we, we can get the ball rolling without me actually being there so that's a, a bit of a challenge for us at the moment particularly in terms of the communications or the difficult mm. communications we have right. um yeah so we've just got to it's, we've got to think a bit differently and a bit creatively about ha- how that will go ahead mm. and um yeah i know the the guys who work with the keen to see things progress because they've been at it for a long time and uh, we're keen to see that that New Testament published and in the hands of the people there. Mm. So that's sort of where we're we're going ahead and um, so we've got a few things to work out in that regard. But hopefully once we do get get to be there more more regularly then um, yeah things can really move along. Mm. So while Adam's working on translation kind of stuff here, um, there's an opportunity for me to work on literacy material for the early, um, like preschool grade one and two and three in the mm-hmm. local school, because the um, Vanuatu government has been uh, have, has a new policy that they want to see all early childhood um, years um, teaching being taught in their local language, not in the English or the French um, languages, which was normally the language of education. So um, just providing or making uh, simple. Primitive, sorry, simple readers here in Australia, um, I can do that from here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really keen to get started on that. We've got sort of shell books and uh, material that we can work on. I just need to get it translated and then publishing it sort of thing. So um, that'll be one of my jobs while, while we're back here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Amongst everything else. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but, but also looking further ahead to when, once they've got the scriptures in their hands, mm-hmm. you know, published form, um, Coming from the, the community we work with, traditionally they're not a literate society. Before the translation work started, there was not one book mm. that didn't have an alphabet for their language wow. and that sort of thing. So that's all been developed as part of the translation project. So reading and writing is not a typical part of their culture. Yeah. So just to sort of hand them over a book and say, go for it, mm. you know, they're, they're really not equipped for yeah. that. Not many people in the community anyway. So then they will need support in terms of using the scriptures. Mm. And uh, it's what we call scripture engagement, and then um, and that's developing Bible studies, um, Sunday school material, maybe developing videos like the Jesus story in their language and that sort of thing, and all that will help them. Also training mm. pastors in, in preaching using the scriptures, yeah, and um, yeah, and so that's that's quite an involved task as well. Uh, we don't feel we're in a position to carry that ourselves. We've done bits of that along the way, but our focus was more on the producing the mm. scriptures. So one of the things we'll be doing and we started doing is looking for a team 
from Australia who will come and take that particular work on and go and live amongst the community for maybe you know, four, five, six years mm. and help them use to get used to using the scriptures as well. So it's not just a book that sits on the shelf. Mm. It's something that they can um, really use in the churches and the, in the communities and, you know, and really benefit from the, the, the work of the, the translation and reading God's word in their own language. Mm. So that's sort of the, the next step after the translation works when you say, you know, it's once we're handling the New Testament, it's not the end of the work. Mm. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's really the beginning of it, you know, yeah. in terms of getting the, the church there really founded in God's word and established in God's word, which has been a, a struggle for the church up until now. They rely on so much foreign language material yeah. that people don't really understand what God's word says. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. but as they are able to access it in their own language, they do understand it. It makes sense to them. Yeah. And, uh, and they can really, you know, know what the good news is mm -hmm. and what God is, is calls, calls them to do. And yeah. I think, um, like, the guy that works with Adam Norman, he's the main translator, he's the, also the minister of the local church in our village community. Oh, okay. And he, you know, he preaches in his local language. He expounds the scriptures and because he's working with Adam day in day out you know well while we were back there mm -hmm. he really has got a, a good grasp of God's love for his people there and it is beautiful because you know he'll preach and as he's preaching like you sort of sit back and look around at everybody and everybody's listening and they are just engaged as opposed to when you have a visiting preacher who might preach in the um, the trade language Bislama and people sort of are a little bit you know fidgety and they don't sort of engage as much but once it's done in the local language and it's good teaching um, they really are listening, yeah. So we just hope to see, you know, God's spirit move as you know the young men yeah. who are doing translation, and we want to just see their own people, you know, come mm -hmm. to know the Lord as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it might encourage you to develop them too in within our district and the language community we live. The, the the church that was established there mostly had pastors from other parts of the country who would come yeah. and work there, and maybe because they didn't have local people who were trained yeah. and, and experienced, and um. And that had its drawbacks in terms of involvement in the community. But just in the last year, there's been a number of appointments of local men mm -hmm. who have been trained and who speak the local language themselves mm -hmm. and really are concerned about the, the local community uh, become coming to leadership within the church. And uh, yeah, so they're the key people then that we can really train and engage with in terms of using the scriptures. So that's uh, that's been encouraging to see. and. Um, yeah, so that's it's it, the signs are good sort of for the future of the, mm. the, the the scriptures using the scriptures within the narrow speaking community. That's great. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. good to hear the future's looking optimistic for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I can't imagine what a moment would that be like to finally read you know the Bible in your own heart language mm. rather than yeah. other language. Yeah. Something that yeah. we in the West wouldn't experience. You know, always growing up having yeah. people like. I don't know how many English Bible translations yeah. there are. So, so we take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah. I was preaching at a church earlier this year and talking about you know access to the scriptures, mm. and I did some research, and there was you know over a hundred English translations that people yeah. could have access to, yeah. you know, available in bookshops and whatever. Yeah. And um, and I'm saying you know the Mary speaking people are yet to get one. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah and, it, and I guess in Australia we we take. You know, speaking English for granted, mm. and, and and everything's everything we can access the internet, you know, all this you know books and everything are all in English, so it's easy for us. Yeah. And it's just in most places in the world, people don't have the opportunity in their own language, mm. and um, and that we find that hard to understand or comprehend. Yeah. yeah. One thing just to add to that, um, and it's because we're in the age of technology, all the young people in the village all have a mobile phone. It's really oh, quite okay, funny. Yeah. But they all know how to use it, and they they may not understand everything, but they're confident enough to give it give everything a go. You yeah. know? And at the moment, um, you know, the U version app for the Bi the Bible app sort of thing mm -hmm. that we have here. I was looking online. I, I was looking at it, and apparently, some of our other colleagues, other translation colleagues from other language groups um, in Vanuatu, have finished who have finished their translations have uploaded that onto the U version. So oh. you've got people sitting in their villages on other islands from yeah. their particular language group where they can you know, access the scriptures even on their mobile phone, even if they aren't able to, you know, have a, a physical Bible as wow. such. And you know how the U version has its audio and you've got yeah. your, you know, highlights as well. So it has sort of a literacy um, help to help people be able to read. So we're hoping that will be something, you know, yeah. in the near yeah. future as well once the um, New yeah. Testament has been yeah. completed. Yeah. Yeah, as well as producing printed scriptures, we'll be recording all the scriptures yeah. into audio format. Yeah. Because yeah. the... So the the older half of the population will probably never read 
And that's but a given. No, that's a yeah, They didn't go yeah. through school you know, and so they're not literate at all. Mm. And um, so for them to access scriptures, either there's someone reading it to them or if they can just listen to it being read, mm. that's, that's the, the way ahead for those guys. And, yeah. um, but even having said that, even the younger people, because reading's not a big part of the culture, once they get out of school, they yeah. don't really read anything. Still, the audio scriptures, even if they can read, the audio mm. scriptures are, are much more useful to them. Mm. Um, so that that will be a so we'll be publishing a, a book and a book they can hold, but we'll be publishing apps that they can just listen mm. yeah. and read read the yeah. scriptures and look at pictures that are associated with the scriptures and that sort of thing as they go. And um, yeah, so that'll be available to everyone within the committee, and that'll be some of the work that. The people, the team that come after us, and the scripture engagement will be involved with that sort mm -hmm. of that work as well, developing all those mm -hmm. things. Oh, that's really exciting! Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots yeah. of things to happen. That's <laughs> very exciting. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, well, just lastly, uh, were there any specific prayer needs that you guys had that we can be praying with you guys for? Remember? Um, well, we mentioned before our, our colleague Norman, oh, who's yes. the, the lead pastor in the community. Uh, he has also a large leadership role within the community, along with the, along with the chief mm -hmm. chieftains of our community. Um, yeah, that God will continue to encourage him, yeah. in, in his because um, he's got a lot of demands on him. Not mm -hmm. he's got a sort of family that's got their fourth child on the way next mm -hmm. month, mm -hmm. so that's something to pray for for the the poor child coming. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, and he also has a leadership role within the work of translation across the country as well. So he's often going to meetings and that sort of thing. So he's got a lot of demands on him. So um, yeah, so God will just con continue to strengthen and encourage him, and that we can continue to do that through our on ongoing work with him. And so because yeah, he he will be um, a key person within the community in terms of seeing the scriptures used, mm -hmm. and um, amongst the people there, and encouraging other pastors and church church leaders in the mm -hmm. use of the scriptures. So really, really pray for Norman. Uh, praise God that we've got someone like that yes, who's so yeah. committed um, to that ministry. And um, yeah, that sort of for his work, but also his family as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, their, their, their house, which he built before he had any kids, mm -hmm. is, um, was quite damaged. It's quite a small house, but it's not big enough for a family of six now. Yeah. And um, so that got damaged in the cyclone as well. So he's trying to get that fixed up. But um, also, we're looking at ways in which we can help with uh, e extending his house. Mm -hmm. And um, there was talk at one point about a team going over this year to help them with sort of doing that extension. Mm -hmm. But that's up in the air at the moment too. So, you know, we'll be praying to the God will show away whether we can just raise the money here and organise some people over there to do the work with him. We're well, having to have that all done before we resume translation work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's sort of... Once again, with COVID and whatever, it's all it's all up in the air. Um, so that's that's for our main colleague Norman, and for the other church leaders there that we work with over the years, that they'll stay committed to you know um, using God's word in their in their yeah. local language, and um, and teaching that to the others. Um, yeah, and then for us in terms of how we we'll get the work going ahead, our original plans have sort of all been yeah. sort of washed away at the moment. Yeah. But uh, so. Just working out how we can do a communication, how we can get the guys working well mm. before we can get um, get back there on a regular basis. Yeah. So just how that all happen, we're not sure at the moment. So we just need some insight into that. Creative thinking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You want to share some things, family stuff? Yeah. yeah. So I think with us now settling back in Australia, um, as I think as parents, we're both very thankful to be back with our kids mm. in the same country again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we feel very. Um, blessed to be able to be a part of their lives at this stage so you know Hayden is in a full-time job and he's loving it and he's learned he's living away from home you know he's not at home he's young old enough to live on his own mm -hmm. so he's good yeah. but it's just fun to you know visit him every so often or have yeah. him over for a meal and then we've got Matthew um, as I said before he him and his fiance have bought a little unit and so they're so well, he's settling he's living there but just to sort of be there as the parent to sort of help him settle yeah, as yeah. a young man in his own unit that get married later in October. So then Nicole will join later on. But then, um, and then Alexa, the, my, our daughter, so she's, um, you know, studying out at UQ at Gatton, but they're mm -hmm. closed and so, um, with the, for their campus, although she was talking about them, her moving back there in, uh, for semester two. So that's good for her. She can mm -hmm. sort of get on with her studies. But I think just to be here to help support them through that yeah. um, as parents and, 
be a bit more part of their life again. I think the last three, or well, as each of our children have left Vanuatu, you sort of feel this little hole that happens in your family that sort of it's decreasing, and you really you do miss them. So it yeah. is fun to be close to them. And then Joseph, he's in grade eleven, so I guess supporting him through grade eleven mm. and twelve with all of the, you know, pressures that come with mm. that. And um, actually, it's encouraging for us. We're excited to see him. He joined the choir at school, and, and oh, yeah. you know, I think he's doing okay. And he likes the idea of being involved in a group. And the other day, he was invited to. Um, join the volleyball team, so he's very excited about that, and he's getting into start, um, you know training. He's not a volleyball player, but you know he's even learning. in that he's learning. So yeah. it's exciting for us as parents, um, and I think I'm very happy to be back here, partly because of my own family, my mum and dad, and um, I have one sister, and she's been bearing a lot of the weight of looking after mum and dad. But I think I can, I feel much better. I'm just glad the Lord sort of led us that this is the part of our time that we need to be back here in Australia. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess pray for my parents, pray for us to help help us to balance our time between ministry and visiting our friends and family, but also looking after our family, our extended family and our immediate, you know, Mm -hmm. um, children. That's a big thing. Work-life balance. (laughs) And a point of praise, I mean, we're always, we're continually thankful for this aspect, but, you know, God has sent us to go and work in Vanuatu since 2003, but it's only been possible by our supporters and friends yeah, and family yeah, who have yeah. been, you know, mm-hmm. supporting us through all this and the, the churches. The whole time, it's been yeah. so painful. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, Cleveland Baptist as a church has been very faithful to us. Yeah, so we, we've we always really felt that support mm-hmm. from them mm-hmm. and um, and really encouraged by that. And it's, you know, it's given us confidence just to be able to focus on our, our work. And to you know to have that continue, mm-hmm. and we you know really appreciate that. So one of the things we we tended to do when we first but this time back here or with the excelling was to go and visit people and yeah. Yeah, speak to groups. Yeah. But that hasn't been possible. But now things are sort of starting to open up a bit. Yeah, yeah we're looking forward to doing more of that. And yeah, um, yeah so yeah, so just to reconnect with people in that way and sort of yeah. And I guess show our appreciation, and you know, I guess also find out you know what goes on in their lives. It, it's yeah. funny because yeah. uh, yeah. you know we send out news all the time, you know, emails and newsletters or whatever, and we come back so everyone knows what's going on in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> we've got no idea what's happening in their lives, so yeah. often it's more of a catching up with what's happening in their lives. Yeah, that's good with us. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun. I love hearing what's yeah. what's going on in everybody yeah. else's yeah. lives. And um, yeah, so there is a large group of them to catch up with. So yeah. that's sort of mm-hmm. you know um, trying to you know balance between. Getting on with the work, mm. looking after family stuff, catching up with supporters and friends and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, so it's it's um it, it might be the quiet life. Yeah, so we've appreciated the, the relative quiet of yeah. the last couple of months. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we're really conscious now that yeah, we really need to sort of get back on the yeah mm. on the train. Just hope it won't speed too much. <laughs> yeah. uh, so there we go. Yeah. Uh, Mission life is never slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, fair enough. Well, it's been really great hearing from you guys and catching up and learning about everything that's going on yeah. and what your life looks like now. I'm sure that church will also be encouraged by this. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much for your time, mate. Please have the time. Yeah. Good Thank one. You.